Hi, welcome to Ratio Analysis uh, Module in your uh, Essentials 2 class. I wanted to briefly talk about something that comes up in the textbooks from time to time, and it's about calculation of the ratios. Uh, your particular textbook uses average assets or average uh, balance sheet items in some of the calculations, and so I just wanted to demonstrate uh, the the difference between using the actual numbers at the end of the statement year and the average numbers. From an income statement, the revenue or the sales is over a 12-month period, typically. So this would be the year ending 12-31-2018. Cumulative sales over the year are 12762816 the assets on that day on 12-31-2018, 7,657,689. They might be higher tomorrow or lower tomorrow. All right, so uh, with some textbooks, if you're calculating the total asset turnover, it simply looks at the, I'll just recalculate them here, it looks at sales divided by end of year assets. Sales divided by end of year assets. With others, it uses the average assets, which is the average between last year and this year. All right, so at the end of 2017, assets were 7,293,038. At the end of 2018, there's 7,657,689. So Using the average says that they were growing over the period, so if you're trying to match them to the revenue, then using the ratio of sales to average assets gives you a better approximation. And that's true in simpleton world, all right, but in the real world, that ain't always how it's, it works. This particular company, if we follow the assets over time, I had 6 million in 2013, 6.3 million. It jumped up to 9.5 million and then jumped back down. And what happened in my contrived example is that this firm went and borrowed $2.5 million on 12 15 2015. So they borrowed a million and a half dollars, and then in January 2016, they paid that money out as a special dividend to the shareholders or bought back stock with it. Either way. All right, so what happened was that that aberration uh, uh, altered on that particular day and for that 30-day period what appeared to be the capital structure of the mix of debt and equity. And it will uh, have affected the assets because when they borrowed the money, their liabilities went up to $2.5 million and the money went into the checking account while they were waiting until they were actually going to pay the dividend. If we calculate the ratios, all right, so we don't get an average on this uh, on this 2013 because I need two years of data to calculate an average of the of the assets. All right, so for instance, the average at the end of 2014 is 2013 plus 2014 divided by two. So by using average assets in our calculation, I immediately lose a data point. And when you have only one year's worth of data, even even in your textbook, in an example at the back of the at the back of the chapter, when you're only given one year of data, they simply calculate based on end of year data, uh, the the same way that that we would that most of us do anyway. All right. So what we see here is. The sales over assets, sales for the year over ending assets, there's one aberration year. It's 1.67, 1.67, 1.16, 1.67, 1.67, 1.67. So that isolates where you need to go. You need to go figure out what happened in 2015 to make this so different. When I look at average assets, though, 1.71, and then you have two years of aberration, and then it goes right back to the 1.71. All right. Now these are contrived numbers, of course, but this illustrates that it makes it more difficult to isolate what actually happened. Usually, when you're doing ratio analysis, you're looking at the components 
of the ratios as well as the actual number. All the ratio value tells you is where you need to look. You're looking for numbers you didn't expect. Here's a company that's just rock solid except for this one period. Well, that tells you to go look in that period to see what caused that to change. If you're doing horizontal analysis, taking a percent change, notice that sales go up 5% each year. That's ending sales over prior year sales minus 1 gives you 5%. You have the same 5% increase in assets, except that in 2015, the assets were 50% higher, and then they went down by 27% the next year, and then it switches back the same, okay? Well, that's the kind of thing that if you're looking in horizontal analysis, uh, that would have also triggered, uh, hey, something changed here that I need to look at. So generally speaking, when I'm doing ratio analysis and, and all the examples that we use in this module, we use end-of-period numbers rather than the average. All right, That's because I don't want to lose a data year, and I also want to be able to pinpoint where something happened. Again, there's no such thing as good or bad numbers. What they are is if you see a big change in, in a number, it it tells you you need to go look and see why there's a change. So there's no such thing contrary to one of the lines in that book about current ratios being 2.0 or higher. Uh, that's just silliness. All right? there, the ratios, there's no such thing as good or bad ratios. You just got to go in there and look and see what they mean. What you're looking for is changes where you don't expect changes, lack of changes where you expect changes, and Generally speaking, you're just looking for the ratios to point you in the direction to look deeper into the numbers to see what's going on with a particular company.